I have another knife I want to share with you today. This time it is the Nomad 6.5 from the Spanish company Joker Knives. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this big knife, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I want to thank Joker Knives of Spain for sending me the Nomad 6.5 so that I could share it with you. So the quick backstory is uh, they sent me another knife, which I've uh, reviewed separately, the Lynx, and they offered to send this one to me because this is, was new to their lineup. Now, they've had the Nomad for some time in a five inch blade, very stout, very heavy duty knife for sure, but they thought that they would like to try it with a, another inch and a half on the end of the knife. So a, fi a six and a half as opposed to a five inch blade. And this to me is the proper size for this knife. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'll focus in on the knife so you can get some uh, finer pictures of it while I go through the specifications for it. And then of course, we'll do some testing. All right, just before we look at the knife itself a little closer, I'll show you the leather sheath and make a couple of comments on that and then put it out of the way. So it is a drop pouch design, nice thick leather sheath, double stitched all the way down the sides, good thick welt that is properly burnished down the side. You can see that it does have a ferrocerium rod loop with a matching ferrocerium rod with the same micarta and red liner as does the knife itself. Inside of the sheath, let me just take the knife out and show you. Hopefully this will show up. There is a liner. Hoping that the light will catch that. There is a white plastic liner from about this far down, so it gives form to the sheath and protects the sheath against the blade. So that's actually a very common design. Back in the day, it was done with wood. There would be a wood liner inside of the leather sheath. Now we've moved over to modern materials like plastic. A uh, couple of things I want to say. This is my own dangler that I put on top of it. It's just one I made out of a piece of nylon belt and a a uh, round carabiner that's so I can take it on and off of this or any other knife of its design. So the belt loop itself, as you can see, is sewn on quite heavily right here. I don't have the older Nomad to compare it with, but one of the comments is, is that the old one had snaps on at this point, so I guess you could slide it onto your belt, but the snaps would fail. So. Uh, Joker listened and they sewed the belt loop on it by itself. It rides pretty well on this your belt not too high It's I like them a little bit lower as you can see so that's right at belt level I like them a little bit lower So that's why I put the dangler on mine and there are four Eyelets through here as well so that you can uh, string some paracord through if you find that there is a need for doing that. All right, so that's the sheath. Let's put it out of the way. All right, let's take a closer look at the knife while I go through the specifications for it. And of course, I'll be putting the specifications in the video description below for your reference. So I'll do this quite quickly. So the blade length, and that's what stands out in this knife, is six and a half inches or 16.5 centimeters. And again, the standard version of this knife comes with a five inch blade or 12.7 centimeters. The bl blade width, it's 3.7 or 3.4 centimeters. That'd be edged to spine. Blade thickness, thick, five millimeters. That's a good, heavy stock blade. And you can feel it because the knife weight is 280 grams. And of course, again, I'll put the English in the, the description below. And it's made with Bowler N695 steel. So we know that that is a good mid-range steel. It's certainly not a super steel but it's a grade up from a lot of the knives on the market today. And if I haven't said this before already in this video, these Joker knives are something that you have to take a look at. If you're ever in the market for a new knife, and even if you're not, it's worth looking at them just the same because these are like a hidden secret. I wasn't even aware of these knives until recently. And now I have, this is the fourth one I'll be reviewing from Joker and I'm impressed every, every time with the quality of construction, the fit and finish, and just the overall design, the feel in the hand, the quality of the sheath, it's all there. So a nice knife for sure. And uh, yeah, I'd recommend you take a look at this knife on the website and all the Joker knives, and they have a lot, a lot of designs, one for every type of outdoor pursuit you can imagine. So let's just go over the design of the knife itself. So as I mentioned, six and a half inches, you can see it is a clip point up here. They refer to this as a spay blade. I don't know if I would call it spay blade so much, but here's, it's kind of a blunt 
quickly round it up here on the edge. It's not a long protruding point on it. Some real advantages to that I'll talk about in a minute. It is a high saber grind, but it comes down to a full convex finish. So it's almost a full convex knife. In fact, you could refer to it that way, uh, either as a high saber with a convex secondary or a full convex, either way you want to look at it. It does have a 90 degree spine, of course. We want those on our outdoor knives. It has considerable amount of jimping from this area to this area. It does have a protruding tang. No jimping on the tang, but it does protrude out quite a bit ways. Uh, it's not very sharp. I wouldn't use that for scraping so much, but you could certainly use it for pounding things with. It has blue or black linen micarta scales on the side with red liners for contrast, and it has three stainless steel pin holding those on. Now, one of the things I want to say about this is, where do you classify this knife as? And, uh, you know, I suppose right away you think a big knife like that, it's a survival knife. And yeah, sure, it is a survival knife. But I see it as more than just a survival knife. I see it as a camp knife because this is something with that high saber grind would excel at meat prep around the camp for sure. You know, any type of a meal preparation, meat or vegetables or game processing, maybe a little bit long, but with that much round towards the tip, you you could skin with it, but as I said, it's probably a little bit long for doing that with for most people, but could be pressed into service for that quite well, I am sure. Um, let's go back to the handle again. So again, minimal contouring. There is a swell in the center for your palm, as there is in this direction, but they're not exaggerated. They're quite mild by comparison to a lot of knives. It does flare out towards the blade as well as towards the pommel. So it does give nice purchase. Even though the choils aren't very deep, there is quite a bit of a guard here. So it gives you good protection and good way of holding onto the grip. And I've said this before about these Nomad knives. For whatever reason, with my XL to double XL hand, these still fit. These still fit and they're still comfortable. Maybe I would like it a tiny bit wider, but I don't feel like I'm compromised at all by the width of this. I think most people are going to find this very, very hand filling, very comfortable. So nicely contoured all over. Now, in full disclosure, I did take a piece of sandpaper and ran it over the micarta very quickly because when it arrived, it was pretty polished. Now, it looked nice, but to me, it just didn't have the grip that I was looking for. So I just roughened it up, and rough is not really the, the right word. I just took the polish off with a piece of sandpaper because it's still very, very smooth, but it does provide me more grip in holding onto it. Big knife, isn't it? Do you know, it kind of reminds me of a BK7, but much classier looking. I have a BK7, and yes, this is just a tiny bit shorter in the blade by half an inch. But in a lot of ways, it has that, it fills the same niche. I think the other one, the BK7, is more geared towards military and survival use, where I see this as more of a general camp knife, can be pressed into a lot of tasks that the BK7 wouldn't do so well at. Really, really nice light. Oh yeah, one more thing. I did put a loop of paracord on the end of it like I do for most of my knives, but I left the loop a little long so that I can put my baby finger through it and that allows me to get back on the knife and use this for chopping. So I'll do that as one of my demonstrations with the knife. So I think that's probably a good time to move over to showing you this knife in operation. All right, again, as I do with most of my knife reviews, I'll keep the demonstrations to a reasonable length so the video doesn't get over long. So what I have is a piece of maple, approximately, I'm thinking 14, maybe 15 inches long, just short of two inches in diameter. Well seasoned, but it hasn't been cut so long ago that it's uh, punky by any means. This is very, very hard wood. So now with a knife this size, uh, you're thinking, um, Batoning, this is an awfully small log for batoning. Yeah, you could. You could press this into batoning a lot larger log if you want to. Uh, that's not usually what I do with my knives. I don't like batoning. If it's anything really any larger than that, and even this, if I have an ax with me, that's what I would use for this size and larger. But it's good to know that you can baton larger pieces of wood. The nice thing about a blade that length is it spans the piece of wood considerably. Let me see, make sure I can get it in line here. So you have a lot of blade to hit with the uh, 
baton that you're using. All right, let's just split this down. So I'm going to quarter it because I, then I'll use the, each of the quarters for a different demonstration. No issue there. Hard though. Really hard wood. So I'll finish this off and to the four corners or quarters. All right. Yep, hard wood, but good hard maple. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll reposition the camera up and we'll do some notching with it. So as with most of my knife review videos, keeping the demonstrations to a minimum, I will create a tent peg out of this quarter. And we start with doing some cross batoning right here so that we can create a stop cut for the tent peg. Cross batoning is a, a test of blade edge strength because it's usually harder to cross baton than it is down with the grains because you're going cross through the grain. Of course, I didn't expect any issue with this knife considering how thick it is and especially with that convex edge. It's really, that's what this type of thing is designed for. So just cleaning out the notch at, to the stop point. It does dig in, I'll tell you, the convex edge on this kind of can be misleading and you think it's, you know, thicker, thicker than it is, but when you get right... So when it comes to putting a point on a stick like a tent peg, uh, as I always mention, there's a couple ways of doing it. Certainly we're going to use the chest lever grip on this knife uh, to do this today, but with a knife this big, it would have been very easy to chop down on some type of a hard surface to put the point on. But there's a reason I use the chest lever because of course, one of the things I'm looking for is to see how comfortable it is in hand as well as how controllable it is. And I also get a better feel for just how much bite the knife has when I'm pulling across. So let's do it that way. I do have another chopping demonstration I'll use this knife for in a few moments time. So just reach in. That took a big chunk out. Not unexpected. Anyway you look at it though this is still hard wood. It's still maple. Okay functional point to say the least you know came off very clean nice clean cuts just glides through last thing i'll do and this is again just a bit of control on the knife itself is like to chamfer the top of our tent pegs just so that they don't split out when you whack on them with a the back of your axe or a stick or even a rock i suppose but so all i'm doing is just cutting across the edges to Round them off, champering is the word. Right, easy enough. Uh, while I have the knife here, let me just show you a few things about this. So it still does have a fair amount of point on it that I can use for things like uh, drilling, for instance, not gonna do this mid air, but you can still drill with this. But because of that big billy it, it, up here, it's not the best drilling knife. It's also the, not the best carving knife if you're trying to do intricate cuts into a piece of wood certainly it does have a fair point you can use it like that like if I was to do this type of thing so you can see I am able to do it but there is one advantage to the shape of this blade right here is that it becomes a cutting surface almost because it's rounded here the the contact surface with the stick is minimized so even though I'm pushing it through and I'm not actually using the tip of the knife, I wouldn't want to call that a tip, but it does prevent, it present a cutting edge that you don't get on knives that have a less of a belly up there. And you can see that dug in pretty darn quickly. Let me finish that off. So you can see very quickly, you can get a lot of material off with this knife. Oh, there is one other feature I don't think I pointed out before, and this is going to aid in the chopping. So maybe you can see this, hopefully you can. The height from this part of the blade from edge to spine 
and this part is different. It's actually a little bit thicker here. It's not a recurve, but it does weight forward. So there is more weight towards this area of the blade, which is where your contact is if you're doing any chopping. So it does give it a weight forward attitude, if you will. So uh, let's see how it does chop. All right, I know what you were thinking when I said I was going to do some chopping demonstrations with this. You were thinking I was going to take a nice big log, maybe eight, ten inches in diameter, and work at it until I got all the way through and destroying my shoulders in the process. But I think if you've watched my channel, you know that's not what I do. I don't chop with knives. Regardless of how big they are, it's not a thing I enjoy doing. Some knives just invite you to do it. Not this one. This is an overall round camp knife that can do chopping, not a dedicated chopper so I'm not going to do that type of chopping with this knife. Now having said that if I did have to take down a tree maybe I'm looking at one standing behind us here that is about four inches in diameter I wouldn't hesitate to do it if I had a need to. I wouldn't do it arbitrarily just for the fun of it or the exercise but in doing so I would be using this knife and a baton to work my way around the trunk taking chunks out like a beaver chew to bring the the uh, tree down. It would not be just whack and whack and whack because to me that's just not an efficient use of my physical energy for that. But what I am going to demonstrate can be a very beneficial in some circumstances. Now beautiful spring day here and uh, we I would have no need for this normally if this were midwinter and I was staying out overnight. I might want to create a browse bed. And a browse bed is where you use branches off of a tree to um, create loft off of the ground. So this is a little black spruce that is on its way out to say the least. It's being crowded out by its big brother right behind it. So I'm going to sacrifice this to the demonstration here. I won't take it all off just because there's no need to kill the tree in order to make this demonstration. But what I've done is I have put my finger through that loop, allowed my hand to come back almost all the way. It's, it's, it's on the last half, last third of the knife, which functionally gives me a longer knife and more leverage. And I'll just take off a couple of these branches just to demonstrate how easily they work. So creating a browse bed or if you have a small tree and you have all kinds of little projections out the side, running this up, I call them snap cuts is uh, very effective with a knife of this side, much more so than a four inch belt knife. So yeah, it's a good chopper. It's just not a heavy duty chopper for creating lumber. So another task of a camp knife or really any belt knife or that you wanna carry if you're doing fire preparation is of course feather sticking. And I just looked through all of the quarters that I cut and they all have little pin knots running through them. So I am going to try to work. There's a pin knot here and a pin knot here. And the problem with those, of course, is when you hit them, usually the knife jumps and you lose your curls. So I am going to, let me bring that down a tiny bit so you can see better. I am going to work between the two of them to see if I can't keep my curls on that way. So let's see. Do you know what? It always impresses me. A convex grind knife. A lot of people will say, yes, very strong, but you can't do any carving with them. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting some pretty fine feathers and curls going with this convex knife. And the reason be is like a Scandinavian grind or zero grind, it comes down to a zero edge. There is no secondary on a convex. It's just that it's beefier right behind the final cutting edge. But what it does is it allows that very, very sharp edge to be that what's touching the wood, but stronger. Wow. Oh yes, this is, this is a treat really. This is almost as good as any Scandinavian grind knife I've ever used. Better than a lot of knives. I am so impressed with how this is carving like this. Do you know, I think what is often said about a convex knife is how do you sharpen them? You know, how do, how do you sharpen a knife like this? Well, not the content of this video. Maybe I'll do that at some time, but uh, nothing fancy. Sandpaper. That's what I use. I go to the automotive sec section of my local hardware store. I get some sandpaper that goes up to 2,500 grit, wet-dry sandpaper. 
tape it down to a nice flat surface. And uh, yeah, the, the technique is something that you do need to get a little practice on, but it works really well for doing this. And if you're thinking that it's not, uh, you're not getting enough contact with the edge, you could put a little piece of foam underneath it and tape it down so that you can draw it in a stropping motion. That, that's the other thing, by the way. All the motion is done with a stropping motion as opposed to forward like you would do with any other edge on a stone. It's all done in reverse. And then strop it off to the finish. And by the way, I have not sharpened this since I got it. Not at all, not even stropping. Let's see how fine a curl I can get. And the length of this. Now, would a shorter knife be easier to control here? Yeah, it would, because you can see I'm only using the back third of the blade for this. Even when I, I try to make use of the slicing action like this, I'm still only using half of the blade. I'm not using the whole blade, even in this direction. All right, how about a super fine curl? Let's see if I can get a couple of super, super, super fine curls. Well, not super, super fine, but fine enough that they would catch a spark from a ferrocerium rod. So I could spend more time to do a more complete feather stick, but I think it demonstrates how well this knife feathers. But does it scrape? I did say it has a 90 degree edge. Let's see how well it scrapes. All right, so I'm going to do a little scraping with the back of the knife. And first thing I'm going to do is just scrape off a little bit of fuzz off of this maple, just to show that that is a viable technique for getting some very, very fine shavings that you can throw a spark into that will catch up very, very easily. A lot like you would do with fat wood, which of course is what we're gonna do next. But you can see how fine those are. They're, they're fine, they'll catch sparks very, very easily. And I think I'll just put that off to the side, but I'll probably throw it on a piece of fat wood. Let's just scrape a little bit down on the fat wood. Doesn't take long to get a whole lot of fat wood scrapings. That wood is a real joy to work with, not just because of how effective it is, but also because of the smell. Love it. All right, Oop, almost lost it all. Getting windy here as well. Now, ferrocerium rod. So here's the thing about using a knife of this size. I have in the past demonstrated how you can use a large knife, lay it down and pull backwards across the knife and direct the sparks into your tinder. Viable with this knife as well. But at six and a half inches, you can still strike it downwards. You just have to be conscious of uh, where the end of your blade is so you don't smash into your tinder pile, but it'll still work. You just have, to, like I said, be conscious of it. Oh. They're sticking to the, oh, you know what's happening? They're sticking as they come off. They're sticking to the goo from the uh, fat one on the back of the knife. That's a bit better. That's the way it should be. Okay, it'll scrape. It'll scrape wood, it'll scrape fat wood, scrape a ferrocerium rod. All right, a few closing thoughts on the Nomad 6.5 from Joker Knives of Spain. So how do I classify this knife? Camp knife, all round knife. This is great for all the tasks you would do around the camp. Everything from wood processing for a fire to meal preparation and everything in between. Well designed for all of those things. Is it a survival knife? Absolutely, it is a survival knife. In fact, I don't know that I pointed this out if I haven't. Uh, I'll do it now if I have already. It just bears doing again. Look at how strong the tip on that knife is. Now, considering that this has this high saber going down to a convex edge, you would think that maybe the knife would be thinner up here at the tip. But because of how quickly the belly comes up, you have most of the uh, width of the spine still there at the tip. That's a survival knife in terms of its tip strength. Now, I didn't do prying tests or anything to see how well this would stand up to abuse. That's just not what I do with my knives. But I have done enough in wood to show that this, there's no, no fear of this tip breaking off. Yet it remains just fine enough for most of the carving tasks I would do. Certainly not a carving knife, but it can still press into service. I say that for a reason, because recently I reviewed a knife that was marketed and right in its name is Survival. And it had what I consider a th tip that I would not trust to stab 
would anyway it's it, it just wasn't something that i would want to be confident in in doing any type of stabbing whatsoever not so this i'd have no hesitation whatsoever to stab this into wood or i guess anything else for that matter it may not have the design for deep deep penetration but it has the strength to know that it's not going to break off yeah okay so here's the thing this is not something I wear on my belt. I did put a belt loop on it, or the, the extended belt loop, because I wanted to wear it for a while to see how it felt. It's okay, but it's still a bit heavy. You know, that's the thing. It's not a belt knife in my mind. It can be, and if you don't mind carrying the extra weight around, then it is. it certainly can. Any bigger than this, I would consider, why would anybody want to carry it on their belt? You know, I know that's a bit judgmental. Some people like to have really big knives on their belt. This is as big a knife as I would put on my belt, but in all honesty, it's bigger than I do carry. So yeah, I what I do with this is if I'm going to come out and process some wood, I know I am for a fire, and I just want to spare the knife, and the belt knife I have today is the Joker Lynx. So it is a kind of a sister knife, if you will. They, they have a lot of similarities in design. Both have the same steel, the same grip material, and everything. This has been reviewed separately, but this is my belt knife. This is what I count on for all the belt knife tasks, is a knife with just over a four inch blade. A six and a half inch blade, that's a cap knife, and that's what I classify this. So as a result, this just goes in my backpack when I want to bring it out and use it for wood processing primarily. Knowing that if I wanted to do food preparation, it would work that way as well. Okay, overall impression of this knife, this is, it's special, it really is. And I think for the five millimeter thickness, the six and a half inches makes much more sense than the five inches does. And for the d design intent as a camp knife, that's another reason why six and a half inches makes more sense, at least to me. All right, I've said enough about the knife. All the specifications, both in Imperial and in and metric, will be in the video description below, as well as the links to Joker Knives of Spain and to Bushcraft Canada, who does import these and sell them in Canada. But if you have any comments or questions on this knife, then please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.